A few years ago, getting a motherboard with good features won't cost you an arm and a leg. But right now, regardless on what platform you are in, getting one is like buying a new processor in terms of its price. And with that said, join me as I do an overview and some testing to determine if this B760 board from ASUS deserves its premium price tag. It's been a pretty while since we did a motherboard video and as always, we will do a quick peek what's in the box, its features, and lastly, I'll add some performance numbers comparing the difference once we raise its power limits. With that said, let's take a look what's included with the ROG Strix B760-F. Within the box, you'll get the board within its anti-static bag, then we have our antenna for our Wi-Fi 6E, and underneath, we have some SATA cables, M.2 accessories including pads, extra screwless mount, and another strip of thermal pad which sadly has a small nick to it. We also have some manual stickers and a thank you card. Finally, we got this ROG bag tag that actually looks good. Use it on your luggage or backpack to low-key flex that you got an ROG product. But before we go to its features overview, I would like to say that this DDR5 motherboard has a heft to it just like those other premium motherboards. Visually, this shouts a very gamer vibe in an ROG fashion, but this time around, you'll see random pixel art designs that adds a unique flair to it. Taking a closer look, starting at the bottom, we have our front audio header, a PWM fan header, 2 RGB header, 112V and 15V, 2 USB 2 header, a Thunderbolt 4 header, 2 more headers for your case fans, and finally, some pins for your front panel connector. On the right side, we got 4 right angle SATA 3 ports and oddly enough, usually ATX boards have 6. A USB 3.2 Gen 1 header and besides it is a Type-C Gen 2 header, the usual 24 pin power connector and our second 5 volt RGB header. Starting the top part with another 5 volt RGB for a total of 3 headers. Underneath is a post LED for quicker diagnosis. Next is the 2 CPU fan header and finally, an 8 plus 4 CPU power connector. And before we go to the rear I.O., I would also like to add that there are 2 more fan slash AIO fan header for a total of 7 PWM fan header. On the back panel, we got 2 display connectors, 1 HDMI and 1 display port, 6 USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports, another Type-A that is Gen 2, a USB Type-C 3.2 Gen 2, a 2.5 gig LAN, our wireless connectivity including Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3 support, and finally audio jacks. We also have our clear CMOS and BIOS flashback button at the back. M.2 support is plenty. We got 3 PCIe 4x4 M.2 slots, one wired towards the CPU while the other towards the chipset. Heat sinks are also included so you don't need to worry about your NVMEs getting hot and this board also uses the screwless M.2 Q latch for an easier storage installation. The reinforced top PCIe X16 slot is running Gen 5 and has the ASUS Q release security latch to detach video cards simpler and faster. The next couple PCIe slots are directly wired to the B760 chipsets, all running Gen 3 speeds. VRMs for this motherboard is an overkill. It features a 16 plus 1 power stage using 60 amps of Vichy SIC623 which shouldn't even a problem even if overclocking is possible. And we have these two big blocks of aluminum heatsink to cool our VRMs down. I wouldn't go too much into detail on its BIOS since this is a locked board but for those who are still not aware, for the past few iterations, Intel has finally decided to unlock RAM overclocking so we can now adjust RAM speeds, timings, and voltage on this B760 motherboard. With that said, I managed to push this Kingston Fury Renegade DDR5 RAM up until 6,800 mega transfer per second and you can check my last video for more details on its performance. I also like the idea that ASUS included a copy of Memtest 86 in this board so you can easily test your memory stability. Power limits can also be unlocked here and ASUS calls this the ASUS Performance Enhancement 3.0. Theoretically, this should give us more performance at the expense of increased power and thermals. I'll flash here real quick the results between running APE on and off.
generally we get an increase on most cases wherein the biggest gain is at 15% with Cinebench R23 Multicore scores. We also get a decent uplift in gaming especially in the 1% and 0.1% flows for a smoother gameplay. But then again, this rise in performance has trade off and surprisingly, this increase in temperature is not that much with my Cooler Master Hyper 622 Dual Tower HC. As for my verdict, besides its price which is roughly around 15,000 Philippine Peso, I can hardly find any flaws on this motherboard. BPVRMs, good number of connectivity, the ASUS Performance Enhancement 3.0 feature, solid design that can be even used in blackout build, and guaranteed support for next-gen Intel CPUs makes this ROG Strix V760-F gaming Wi-Fi a recommendation to anyone. It is just a well-built motherboard and to be honest, the price premium that it is asking is justifiable for me. And I think that's all for today. What are your thoughts on this motherboard? And I just want to ask how much is your budget when buying motherboards in general? Comment it down below and I do hope that this video helped you in some way. Once again, this is Brain of Junkyard Summit. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.